In this video, I wanted to talk about some of the things that can often be really, really confusing when it comes to establishing a really good, really healthy and active sourdough starter. Because depending on where you live in the world, there are a lot of variables that can make your sourdough starter work really well or work not so well or take just that little bit longer than the instructions might say. This has been a highly requested video since I did my beginner sourdough video and I will leave a link to that in a card above my head and also in the description box so that if you are brand spanking new to sourdough, you will get fantastic results. So if you want to find out all the secrets to making a fantastic sourdough starter, then keep on watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe and also please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Now let's get into the video. So first off, I will leave a recipe to making your sourdough starter from scratch in the description box below to save us some time. So let's just pretend you have your basic sourdough starter, you are almost ready to bake with it or so you think. And you might read online that your starter should be ready after about seven to 10 days. But you're looking at your starter and you're thinking this doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to bake with this. Maybe it doesn't have that really sour smell that we look for, or you just don't think it's really bubbly and active enough. Personally, when I started my sourdough starter, which has been thriving for the last 10 months now, it took me about six to eight weeks to get it right to where I really wanted it to be. So if your starter is a little bit lackluster after that seven to 10 day period that everybody seems to say that your starter should be bubbly and active and perfect by, then don't worry, give it that little bit of extra time, keep up your feeding routine and trust the process. It will come good, it may take, just as I said, that little bit of extra time. And this is really closely linked to the climate in which you live and the part of the world you live in. So I live in Ireland where the climate is very cold a lot of the time, or it may not get to what a lot of people would refer to as room temperature. If you have a house in Ireland, you'll know that room temperature can be about seven degrees at times, depending on the time of year. And so sourdough starter recipes or guidelines, which say that you should leave your starter to rest at room temperature after you feed it, doesn't really make much sense if you live in a super hot climate or a kind of moderate to cold climate like I do. And another variable is the room temperature in your home. So we typically don't have the heating on a lot because the oven tends to be on quite a bit. But if you are somebody that has the heating on in your house or has a fire in your kitchen or a stove, your room temperature could be a lot warmer than what the recipe says. Just stay persistent. This is all about learning. It's all about learning what the conditions are in your house and how that affects the growth of your starter. Yeast is a living organism, it responds to its environment, and so you just have to get in tune with your starter and learn how it responds to different temperatures. So now let's talk about actually using your starter to bake with, and this point is really closely linked to climate and temperature and all of those environmental factors. How long is it supposed to take for your yeast to bubble up and be active and happy and ready to bake with? Again, completely subjective, completely dependent on where you live and the environmental conditions in your home or wherever you are doing your baking. When you feed your yeast, some guides will say that it should be bubbly and ready to use after about two hours. I have never found that my yeast has been ready after two hours. Usually it's 12 hours. Sometimes, for example, if my house is particularly cold, if I'm baking in winter, I will actually feed the starter and leave it in the top oven because since heat rises, some of that residual heat from the bottom oven will rise and just slightly raise the temperature of my freshly fed yeast and help it to bubble and get really active just a little bit faster than it would if I left it at room temperature. So what I tend to do is feed the yeast the night before I'm due to start baking and let it sit overnight, again, as I said, either in the top oven or close to a fire in the winter. It sounds crazy, but you do have to work with what you have. So what indicators can you look for to tell if your young sourdough starter is ready to start baking with? Well, firstly, I really like to go by smell. So in the beginning stages of growing your sourdough starter, you'll notice that the smell is quite sweet. It doesn't smell sour or alcoholy or like you would expect it to smell if it's been sitting there for quite a while. Sometimes my starter can even smell like really strong cheese and I love that. I know that my starter is super happy when it smells that way and it's going to give me a fantastic 
sour dough loaf. But in the initial stages, your starter will tend to smell more on the sweet side. But you also may notice that your sourdough starter smells like alcohol and it's not particularly pleasant unless that's your gig. And it may start to give off this alcoholy aroma because one of the byproducts of yeast fermentation is actually alcohol. And so when your yeast activity is starting to fall away in your starter after maybe you fed it a day or two ago, that's when that alcohol production will start because the yeast has run out of food. Now this is not a problem. All I will do is pour off any of the hooch layer that has developed on the top of the starter. Give your starter a good stir to allow oxygen back into the mixture and feed it again. Give it a day, see how it responds but typically they respond very, very well. And so as I said, if you notice that this hooch liquid, this great brown sort of liquid has developed at the top of your starter, it's not really a cause for concern. It just means that your starter is crying out for some love and attention and some food. Sometimes I'll pour it off, but sometimes I will actually leave some of it on the top because I think it adds a really tangy, gorgeous, sour taste to my bread. So if I'm looking for a particularly sour loaf, because that's how I like it, I will leave some of that hooch layer on the top and simply stir it back in. But a word of warning, if you do see mold growing on the top of your starter, then I wouldn't stir that back in. I actually would discard as much of that starter as I can from the top layers. So say for example, if I had mold on the top here, I might be able to get rid of this maybe inch of starter and then salvage what's left on the bottom that is a decision that you can make but just always be cautious when it comes to mold growth on any kind of food product it can be potentially harmful in terms of feeding your sourdough starter some people feed every single day this is not me i don't feed it every day what i tend to do is i actually have a larger sourdough starter that i let live in the fridge and what i'll do is i will take the amount that I need from that larger starter, pop it into this jar and feed just the amount that I need. This allows me to avoid a ton of waste when it comes to baking, which obviously is central to my zero waste lifestyle. As we mentioned, temperature is really important for your sourdough starter. So when you reduce the temperatures in the fridge or even in the freezer, your yeast growth is going to slow right down. So this allows you to drag out the time between each feed. So if you do this method and you keep your larger starter in the fridge and you only feed as much as you need, it means that your yeast only needs to be stirred and fed in the fridge maybe once a week and you can even stretch it out to two weeks between feeding. So my advice would be that if you are going away for an extended period of time, leave your sourdough starter with somebody else to look after because you do not want to come home to a really unhappy sourdough starter that you've put so much time and love and effort into and it is really just sad and done. You, you just don't want to happen you don't want to have to start from day one all over again and especially when you've had your starter for so long like this guy has been with me now for 10 months and he's still going strong i don't want to see anything happen to him so i think the really key thing to take from this video is that your starter is so individual it depends on where you live it depends on the conditions in your home and it depends on how often you feed it and how often you want to look after it don't worry if your starter is not progressing the exact same way as the instructions state Give it time, be persistent and be patient and it will reward you in loads of beautiful sourdough. If you have any particular questions on your sourdough starter that I haven't addressed in this video, don't forget to leave them in the description box below and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And if you like this video and found it helpful, please do give it a big thumbs up. And also please don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss any more of my upcoming videos and I look forward to seeing you really, really soon. Now I'm off to bake some bread. Bye.